All right. Well, actually, I lied. Final question always goes to the guest. Zach, anything you've ever wanted to ask me, or Christian for this matter? Anything? I know, even, I know we, had, right. we only had that one in the beginning, but we have a sec, we have a fresh one. Fresh one? Ooh. Fresh, I wasn't thinking of the fresh one. It can be a personal question. Okay. It can be an unknown, unknown, unknown question. It can be oh, anything. Yeah. The last question always goes to the guest. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So everybody basically always has that moment where they realize this is what I know I want to do. Mm, I love this For question. both of y'all, mm -hmm. when did you realize that moment? Oh, we're going split screen on this one. All right, Christian, you go first. I My story sounds like it was out of a movie. It sounds completely unbelievable. I was eight years old, and I started listening. That's probably around the time I started listening to hip-hop music for the first time mm -hmm. you know growing up my parents listened to oldies and soul records and funk records and all that types of stuff and i listened to a lot of pop and what was you know on at the time when i was growing up at that age the kindergarten first second grade um and it was second grade i was eight years old i started listening to hip-hop music and i made a decision i can't tell you exactly what day it was but i knew that i wanted to rap i wanted to make music and i went to the school store didn't eat lunch that day, took my $3, and bought myself a little notepad. Nice. And from that day, you know, I stuck with it. I stuck with it. I mean, up until now, I still do music. And I knew that I wanted to do music. And then out of necessity, I taught myself engineering because I started so young. I was recording on cassette tapes on a $5 mic from Five Below. Um, and then I upgraded and leveled up, leveled up a little bit by little, got good equipment, got better microphones, got better interfaces. And, um, I couldn't pay for a studio. So I taught myself how to engineer and I got tired of paying for beats. So I taught myself how to produce. But since that day, I've been all about the music. Second grade, eight years old. That's good. So you're lucky <clears throat> that you knew exactly what you want to do from a young age. Like I, I genuinely feel bad for people who just don't know what they want to do. Like, if you are graduating high school and you know you want to go to college, but you don't know what for, like, I, I'm i sorry. Like, that must be terrible because I, I consider myself very lucky I didn't have that. I just, I always knew something in the creative sphere. Um, I've always been creative. Mm. Uh, writing was something I was pretty good at. I'm better than I give myself credit for. I just don't actually, like, I like writing, but... The hardest part of writing to me is to sit down and start writing. Like once I start and I'm in the flow, I'm in there. Like right. you see all these list of questions. Start, I start, don't stop. The I start going. Part. The hardest part of writing is writing. Like duh. Um, but communications, radio, podcasting, that kind of field, a little more specific and honing it in was my freshman year of high school. Uh, my brother is three years older than me. So we were looking at, we we're touring colleges. Um, and we went to Syracuse. He was looking at Syracuse. We walk around campus, and my dad goes, "Hey, Will, you see that building over there? That's the School of Comm, the School of Communications." He goes, Bob Costas went there, and around that time, I was watching um, Ken Burns' baseball documentary series, like the eleven-part series, and Bob Costas was a feature on there because he's a huge baseball guy. And Bob Costas is like one of the most famous people in broadcasting history. He does the Olympics, Super Bowls, World Series, everything. So he was on the MLB Network a lot. So I was watching a lot of MLB Network. And I saw a lot of Bob Costas on TV. So right then and there I go, that's what I want to do. I want to go to that school. I want to go to the school of calm. Um, so I knew I wanted to do communication, to turn into journalism, to turn into radio, to turn into podcasting. But I've always known exactly what I wanted to do because just something, cl something clicked in my brain. And that, it's, it's that's fortunate it. to, like, to your point, to know what, not not only what you want to do, but to find out that you're good at it. Yeah. At a young age. Yeah. Like and, and the kind of yeah. the same thing with my story is that it was something creative, like you said. I used to I used to dance. I used to be some dancing jelly jelly bean, couldn't stay still, Chris Brown pop locking all over the place, little kids. <laughs> and after dance it was music. I played tried different instruments, but it was always sound. Even when I was like, you know, three years old, like I wanted I basically wanted tap shoes to walk around in. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so I, it, it, things that made noise. It was sound for me. Right. Um, no, I feel you on that. So, yeah, well, like, you know, knowing what you want to do 
and kind of finding out that you have a natural knack for it yeah. and seeing how it evolves. You got you to find, find the balance. Because I, I want to be Derek Jeter, right? I want to be what's up for the Yankees. See, I never cared about sports. See, I can't play sports. I'm bad at sports. So that dream went out the window. Um, but like, I remember, I mean, like, you remember like, when you're a kid, you have like this book of like careers. What do you want to be when you grow up? It's like fireman, policeman, doctor, Did you have lawyer. career day? I never had a career day. We, we, did, we did have career day. I never had a career no. day at any never of. Never had a career day. Yeah, it was third third it's grade. Like, that's like TV shit. That's <laughs> Ned's declassified. So what what we did what we did for career day actually was um third grade we had like you know what I want to be when I grow up day career day we all kind of pick it we kind of just dress up with the costume write a little report we actually the school help us get in touch with someone after that profession we get to talk to them. As a so, third grader, third grader, yeah, yeah. doing networking, wow. <laughs> yeah. doing job fairs, yeah, job fairs in third grade, yeah. God damn! So again, you ready? Mine. So how labor laws be like? What? Just, well, we didn't like. We didn't like <sighs> actually sit down and talk to them. Like we had a list of questions, we sent them, and they would answer them. We had to put like, that in our report. Here's my card, kid. Yeah, pretty much. So mine, mine was archaeologist. I liked digging. I wanted. I wanted to dig holes for a living. Mm. Right, and then. Literally, and, what, and this is this is this is uh, elementary, third grade. Okay. One of what turned me off, uh, like one of the questions was, "How much money do you make?" She was like, "Not a lot, but thirty thousand a year." I was like, "Nope, that dream's done." How did you 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 knew about the importance of money? Well, I, I, <laughs> I didn't like nine I years didn't, old. I didn't know what Yo, like, like you like. I want a Maybach, so that's not gonna work. I didn't know what like th- I didn't know what thirty four thousand dollars <laughs> meant. Like to me, thirty four thousand dollars meant. I don't know if it was thirty four thousand dollars, but she said. Oh, like she's like, unfortunately, the pay isn't great. It's honestly not that much, but I do it for the passion. And in my eight, like seven year old brain was just like, fuck that. <laughs> or eight, I rolled in third grade. I was like, no, I'm not doing yeah. that. But, you know, I had to finish, I had to finish with, with the project, so I couldn't go back now. <laughs> so yeah. I finished it. That's the crazy. That's the crazy thing about it, because my story is a bit different uh, between all the three, between the three of us. I'm, I'm the late bloomer of the group. It took me a long while, like, I guess like like going through my twenties and you know finally leaving the house for the first time, living in a different state, culture mm-hmm. shock, all that. Come back, and it was around 2016 where I was like heavy in like pro wrestling Facebook groups and all that. Met two dudes, um, Nick Doolin and Kevin Obarski, uh, the, uh, and we you know started becoming cool, started talking, thinking like, yo, let's do this podcast. There's the three of us. We'll talk. We'll just do what we do. And so we did we did the wrestling with issues podcast for about a year or so, a little over a year and a half. And and all of a sudden it did like it just dissolved. Nothing, nothing too crazy, nothing like a bad fallout or nothing like that. It was just it dissolved. So I remember like it was yesterday. Um, I'm sitting in my mom's crib, um, on my phone going through Instagram, and of all people I see, Gary fucking V. Gary V doing this video Gary thing v, baby. for Gary fucking V doing uh doing anchor. And so like, he was talking about, yeah, you can just do it off your phone and all that stuff. And I'm just like, that's the easiest fucking thing I can ever do right now. And I started getting back into pro wrestling around this, around the time I moved back to New Jersey in 2016. Mm. So 2018, July 18th, 2018, I will never forget this day. Um, I was just sitting there just like, you know what? Let's try. It. Let's see how this works. And recorded episode one. Um, I didn't realize I felt like I had made it until 2019 before I got uh, recruited by um, Will and King Ricky. Um, I was nominated actually for uh, the 2019 Newcomer of the Year at the Wrestle uh, Radio Awards. And I was just going through one night. I had just finished recording um, an episode and I was just like, oh, let me just get a gander at it just to see, you know, who I would vote for and whatnot. I'm scrolling through, picking my people, and next, you know, new, Newcomer of the Year comes up. And I see my podcast name in there. And I X out of it and I look back. And I'm thinking, there's no way. There's <laughs> my eyes, no my eyes are fooling way. me. My eyes be fooling me. This dude right here from Eaton Town, New Jersey, Mom and Fucking County, is not nominated for Newcomer of the Year 2019 mm-hmm. from Wrestling Radio Awards. And that moment, that's when I realized I got something here. I could do this. Yeah. I could do this. And then all of a sudden, Will, King, uh, Ricky come into the picture. We started getting the chatting. And next thing you know, I'm, one of the, I'm the newest member of WrestleMania Radio 2020. Dope. So, I mean, at that moment, like, and here's, and here's my thing, and I'll, and I'll say this to everybody. Honestly, think about every, like, Morgan Freeman didn't really become a big deal until what? Like his 40s, his 50s? Yeah. 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 Like he's like been, he, old, he's been he old, old his whole JK career. Ra- J.K. Rowling, when she did her career. book, she was a little bit older. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Morgan Freeman like, is like what, 130 20, years old. I was 20, when well, no, I was 30, actually, when I started this. 
Yeah, you just gotta keep looking. Yeah, you keep looking, you'll find it. It's passion. You gotta find. You gotta. It's such such a cliche thing to say, but you gotta find. You gotta find what you're passionate at. What you're good at. Yep. I mean, I think people I, I are was, good at yeah. it. Like, so, like you can. Everyone is good at something. Absolutely, hundred percent. Like, I, there's two things I know I'm good at: talking about pro wrestling and talking shit. So I combine those Hell together, yeah. and I got what I got right now. <laughs> four years. About, it's about to be like. It's honestly next next week is like literally four years in the game for me as a solo podcaster. Never in my wildest dreams, July 18, 2018. Never did I think I would be literally sitting here right now doing an interview with one of my like you know compadres in the war gang and you Christian, and then you know doing all this like. You don't think about you honestly don't think about it, and a lot of people don't. But the thing is, is just when you when you know that when you know exactly what you hone into and what your focus is, the sky's the fucking limit, people. Yep. At the end of the day, you just gotta know exactly what you're into and turn that into something. Once you find there's a lot it, of people in this world that have it. a lot of talent and just waste it, and, the, and that's that's a big deal for me. Like everybody, I feel in my mind has some value to add to society it's just what form of value will you bring to society this is mine 